The scripture today is Mark 4, 35 through 41. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. I'm not sure what we should do, but we have to do something. I hear Kay read these words of Jesus. Have you still no faith in these very stormy waters? But I'm kind with the disciples on this one. Why is he asleep in the middle of our storm? Or why does it feel like he is? And how do we connect with the God who carries us through any storm when on an almost weekly basis we hear of another incident of gun violence or racial hatred? I know all of you joined with me in praying for the beautiful and good and faithful people who attend the Emmanuel AME Church in Charleston, South Carolina, who experienced such tragedy this week when a shooter walked in and shot nine of them dead during a prayer meeting or Bible study, including their pastor, Reverend Clemenza Pinkney. We have to be better than this. People talk about the violence found in the Bible, particularly the Old Testament as if we've somehow evolved into some sort of different place. But it's not more violent than this. It can't be. This violence that's occurring in this country far too often can't be worse than that Old Testament violence. I cannot tell you in my time just in this congregation how many of my sermons have changed direction or altered content over the course of a week because of a mass shooting or a breakout of violence. What on earth is wrong with us? God has got to be tired of this. Jesus has to be leaving. And people are saying, where is God? Of course. But I'm sure God is saying, why are my children dying at the hands of their brother? And so the tears continue to flow and the hearts continue to break. So too are we here today. We're heartbroken and confused. And we find ourselves in the midst of another storm with our brothers and sisters of color. Another day of bailing out the boat as the waves of hate pour in and pour in and pour in. Another day of trying to sail toward a better horizon but getting lost in the swirling wind and rain of no clear direction. No clear source of change on the horizon. This story we heard today is one of the most famous stories of Jesus in the Bible. Jesus on a boat with his disciples and this major storm develops. The waves were pouring into the boat on all sides, so much so that the boat is in real danger of sinking. And you've seen enough movies to imagine the scene, right? And maybe, maybe a couple of you have actually been in such dire circumstances. And incredulously, Jesus is sleeping sleeping through the storm. What's up with him? And what is this story trying to tell us anyway? The disciples scream at him to awaken, they try to awaken him, and they yell angrily at him when he wakes up about his passive stance on this whole storm business. To which in true Jesus fashion, 
He just simply tells the winds and sea to calm down, and miraculously they do. Jesus then scolds the disciples for having no faith or very little faith. I'm not sure how I feel about that part. It's one thing to have faith, but when your boat is sinking, well, someone to help you bail out the water is awfully nice to you. I mean, when someone cries out in the midst of a church or school or a convenience store shooting, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? This is a scene you're imagining. A sleeping Savior, not involved in your thinking. I have to wonder what this story means. It seems to me that we do need to have unboundless, limitless faith, knowing that if Jesus is with us, the storms, the storms will somehow right themselves. He scolds them for having no faith and calms the waters and makes the storm go away and everything is fine again. But this only happens after they awaken him in a panic and yell at him for not paying attention. So do we have to panic and get to the point of thinking we're near death to call on Jesus? How about those good people in Charleston? They were in the middle of calling out to Jesus. Twelve people praying together in a church. Twelve people reading the Bible together in a church. This didn't stop any storm from coming your way. We pray we will have an easy path to follow, that we won't have to get too immersed in the faith. That's where this sermon was originally headed. We pray that Jesus won't ask too much of us. And then something like this happens and you think, how can I just stand here and not jump in and try to help? We have to ask ourselves, ourselves, what kind of Christian are you? The one who doesn't get on the boat at all? Afraid of being on the open sea? not knowing what God might expect of you? Are you a Christian who gets in the boat but prays you don't get too immersed in what God asks? Are you the one who starts working on the rescue as soon as there are signs of trouble or planning what the rescue will be even before there's trouble? For me, I admit it really depends on the day, the week, the season. I always sort of want the kind of faith that these saints I have admired and loved through the years have. These beautiful souls along the way that taught me the way of Christ. And the people who just get up and go to the scene of a tragedy or a disaster or a sign of trouble and roll up their sleeves to help. I sort of want to be that kind of person, but I did say sort of, didn't I? I admit I too often put on a poncho. Just let my baptismal waters hit me a little bit, maybe on the hand or a ear, hiding behind a protective barrier that prevents me from really getting soaked, really diving in and trying to make a difference in a world that is broken and calling out for me, for me, to be part of its recreation. I also admit that I still am troubled by this scripture. This lectionary text for this week, Jesus seems to imply that all they need to do is ask, and he will calm their seas. But how about when you ask, and the next thing that happens is a master? What then? Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? The scripture reads, Teacher, do you not care? We are perishing. Oh God, please, please care. Please be there. There's a scripture in the Psalms that says, Oh God, tear open the heavens and come down. Please come. So what do we do when our faith feels uncertain? When we aren't sure where God is in the midst of a broken and sinking ship in the middle of an ever-growing, ever-violent storm? What do we do when it feels like Jesus is asleep and we are desperate for him to pay attention? The scripture continues. He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace be still, or quiet 
be still. And why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? Perhaps those are the lines that we repeat to ourselves. Perhaps that is the beginning point, the starting point. We stand up together in the name of Jesus and we say together with our brothers and sisters who are in this terrible storm, in the name of Jesus, peace, be still. Maybe then we will show that we too have the faith of the saints, that we too are perhaps afraid, that happens, but we are not going to sink in fear. And we're not going to let our sisters and brothers sink in despair. Relying on Jesus means beckoning Jesus in each moment. Now, it won't take away any lingering doubts and questions about where exactly God was when people are praying in their church and get gunned down anyway. But all we can do is to believe that God is always with us in the midst of our storms. God is there even when it seems like or feels like God's asleep. Our projections, after all, of who and where God is in our lives, our projections are much smaller and less significant than where God actually is in our lives. And we must remember that the Holy Spirit, in the moment of Pentecost, came to us that we might be Christ present in the world. So we cannot let fear drive us out of trying to save our neighbor or save ourselves. We cannot let hate win the day. We cannot allow love and peace and justice to take just a small sinking part of this boat we call humanity. And even way out here in Boulder County, we cannot pretend it's not our struggle too. I pray we can jump in the boat somehow, some way, and struggle with our sisters and brothers in Charleston and everywhere who are simply trying to stay afloat and live their lives. And I pray we can make a difference and actually bring about the kingdom of God. That's what we're called to do. Bring about the kingdom of God, bring about the beloved community, as Martin Luther King referred to it, bring about the peaceable kingdom, and bring it about not 20 years from now, not 10 years from now, but right now. So we should all say together as we leave this place today and in every day to come, in the name of Christ, peace, be still. Amen.